All right, guys, as promised from our Vegas Aquarium Tour, we wanted to return back to this shop because this place is truly something special. It's only a thousand square feet, but it's got more fish in it than I've seen in places three times its size. It's only been open for less than a year, and it's got so much cool things. Let's go in it. We've got fresh water, we've got salt water, we have plants, and even oxalotls. Come on in. I told you, there's no controller in my system, baby. A rock and roller. Yeah, you can never play my lines Ain't got no quota Just find me in the sky All right, guys, let's check it out. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Clint. Welcome. All right, Thanks guys. Thanks for coming, Sean. Thank you so much, and this place is awesome. So Thank we walked you. through here for our Vegas Aquarium vlog, and I wanted to come back and do a full feature on this place because we've been open for less than a year. Yeah. You got yeah. about a 1,000 square feet here, mm -hmm. but I was saying, that you have more fish here than I've seen in places three times your size. So I want to jump right into it. What do yeah. you got going on here? Um, well, I mean, as you can see, we pile stuff to the ceiling. So we just have fish on top of fish, on top of fish, fish yeah. tanks on the roof, pretty much. Like, you even have fish up here, yeah. up on your exit. Yep. So you might make it out of the aquarium store somehow without seeing something that you wanted. <laughs> but right before you walk out the door, you've got some fish right above here. Does anyone buy out of these tanks? Yeah. You do? How do you even get a net up in there? Ladders and, you know, you bend the net a little bit, you can kind of get get it to work. Where there is a will, there's a way. That's yeah. something that has been proved in this shop. Where there's a will, there's a way. I mean. So, so much cool and special stuff here. One thing I noticed right away was you have a fair amount of discus, small, medium, big. Tell me about your discus. Are they hard to take care of? Not a lot of people carry discus. Yeah, I mean, they can be a little finicky, but as, as long as you have good, clean water um, and feed them a good diet, you're, you're normally pretty good. Um, you know, there's a lot of great discus breeders out there. Right. So they do they do really well at acclimating them to you know life in a fish tank right um it's came a long way in probably the next last like 10 years or so yeah discus used to be like extremely mm -hmm. hard to do i went to a discus show down in houston texas a few years ago and this was only for professionals so yeah. i mean you said that there's a lot of great breeders are you breeding these or do um, you have some experience doing we're that? we're starting that um we're starting the discus breeding. It's just, it's kind of on the bucket list. There's there's so many other projects to do. It's like, all right, well, we did this, cool. Well, let's move on. We'll do we'll do something else. And and discus is definitely on the list. Well, these guys are pretty small. About how old is a discus like this? Those guys are probably around six months or so. Six months. Yeah. And then you work over into about this size. How old is this one? Yeah, um, they'll get hit growth spurts and those are probably about nine months so not only three months and you've yeah. almost doubled yeah. their size good and diet so, man and then you move over to this massive guy yeah how he's probably a year and a half so six months nine months and then you more than four times its size in less than a year so yeah. that's pretty impressive i wouldn't have thought that discus would be this easy to take care of but Obviously, Clint's gonna steer you the right way. If you're in the Vegas area, definitely come check out his discus. We got you. Another cool thing I saw here when I was walking through is these tiny little angels. See if you can get in there on that, Max. These guys are less than the size of a dime. Yeah. How old are these? Um, those guys are probably, probably in between like four or six weeks. Oh, wow. So these are like hatchlings almost. Yeah. Yeah, now, yeah. are you breeding these? Yeah, those are those come from the shop. So you We've got breed all the these. parents up there. I, you know, I don't see that very often. <laughs> a lot of times people are outsourcing where they get their fish, but you are actually breeding your own fish yeah. here. I, where do you even do that at? Do you have another shop or are you doing that at home? You know, that's why we've got, we've got tanks on tanks on tanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are, what do you feed these little guys? Um, so we start off with like baby brine. Um, we'll, a lot of times we'll do green water, which is what kind of what you see in here. Um, so there's just like a bunch of microorganisms. They'll pick on that. They're absorbing the nutrient. Yeah. So this is where they're all hatching in here. Yep. Oh, You'll all see, these like, little dots. We have even like parrotfish over here. Uh, there's some little fryer in there. Oh wow! You can see the tiny little baby parrots, Max. I don't know if your video camera is going to grab that, but that is super cool. Look at all the babies. And they're feeding off of like the green microalgae inside of the aquarium? Yeah, just the, the, just the micro foods that are kind of like naturally in there once you have 
you kind of get the green water, and then we'll start them off in the in the baby brine. Now, is um, this frozen baby brine or is this no, live? Right. You're making yeah. that here too. We, we make all of our own stuff. I think I saw that unit. I let's go over yeah, there. Come check it out. Show me what you got cooking up here. It's like a little lab here in the shop. <laughs> it's something you've seen off of like a, a series of movies or something. So every day, and we, we've already used all of these today. So we made, these are probably gonna be ready for tonight when we feed them, because you have to feed them multiple times a day. So this is the older, right? Yeah, so these are already here. ready. These are ready to be fed. And then um, we'll, make, we'll make a new batch tonight. Um, it takes about 18 hours or so for them to hatch, and then they're ready to go. And do this. Yep. This kind of reminds me of like our turbo start back at Fritz. Like you have the you have these big giant stainless steel uh, like brewery hot uh, vats that are like 5,000 gallons. You open up some of them and they're completely clear. And then as it matures, it gets dark like this. So yep. that's super cool. Another thing that you have brewing over here is something in the yellow, and I noticed it says reef chowder now i eat chicken corn chowder but i don't think i'm gonna try this what do Why you not, have man? in here um so there is brine um we do put brine in there um like copepods amphipods rotifiers like all the kind of micro foods that you would feed reefs or you know saltwater fish do really well we just we kind of like to do our own thing we like to make everything we're very hands-on shop so you're making your own reef chowder mm -hmm. And one thing from the, the, the vlog that we did was we showed your zoanthas and how fast they're growing. Yeah. So let's go back over there. Okay. I'm sure you're, this, the reef chowder is in the mix. It is. Um, let's check them out. These colonies are something that you don't really see anymore. Back when I was working at Dallas World Aquarium in my early 20s, late teens, you would get these rocks from, mm -hmm. from wholesalers. Um, but you don't anymore. This is very difficult to find rocks this big. You have got a source where you're getting these these zo zoas, but you said they were uh, maybe, how big were they a couple months ago? Um, I mean, they've definitely grown since then. You could probably see most of the new growth, but I mean, they've probably gotten maybe 30, 40%. And then, you know, we, we'll, we'll sell the whole colonies or we'll frag them out and then they just grow even quicker. Okay, so you can either buy the whole colony. Mm -hmm. How much is a colony like that That eagle eye red zoa right there? Those are my favorite right there. Um, they all kind of vary, but they're right around in between like 150 to like- 200 bucks. bucks. Yeah. That's not much more than they were a decade ago when I was selling them. So that's a really good price on that because you would get maybe five to 10 of those yeah. at a coral show and you'd be paying 40, 50 bucks for that. Yeah. So, so that's a super good deal. Now, do you have an area where you've cut these up and yeah. they're selling them on plugs or something? Yeah, like right that? over here. Yeah, let's go check that out. Yeah, so all of these zoas basically come from those those rocks. And they started off, um, you know, probably five or six like heads and then they've grown out. This is super awesome. Yeah. It's something that I really like to see shop owners doing because you're farming them yourself. And the more that you're farming, yeah. the more that you're creating a sustainable hobby for us all, right? Yeah, we're very much into that. We wanna, we, we don't wanna rob the reefs of everything that they got, you know what I mean? We, when we can do it ourselves, yeah, that's just better for everyone. Absolutely, I think that's a big place of where the hobby's going. There's a lot of people cutting these corals up, a lot of people growing themselves, which makes them hardier for you because they've been growing inside of the aquarium store since they were very small. So. Very cool, thanks yeah. for doing that. Yeah. But there's so much more here. You have a full saltwater, like how many saltwater tanks do you have here? How, about how many fish do you carry? I mean, I don't even know anymore. They just kind of, we, we just start adding and adding and adding. So um, we we have nine main systems that are on um, individual sumps for each row. Um, we carry about a million different variations of like clownfish and then your tangs and yeah. All the staples. What's the stuff. coolest thing you've got here right now? Some of the fancy clowns. I mean, I just, I've never even seen some of them just in stores, right? Because right. we, we haven't been doing this very long. So. Show me, show me your coolest clown. I think this guy's the coolest. Because he looks like a, he looks like a, um, like a wrestler. <laughs> what is that guy? What's his name? Because you got like, That's you got the, the super, super storm, storm. Yep. clownfish. Okay, so that guy right here is from yeah. 95 bucks. Now, is this is this a male? 
or female? You um, can tell? I don't think he's really sexed yet, because like clowns... And that's the cool thing about clowns, they can change their sex, yeah. right? And so yeah. you put them with another clown and eventually they kind of work it out, right? So... Yeah. I mean, more along like the self-sustaining and yeah. stuff like that, is that these all come from a breeder. Right. So... Here, local to Vegas? No. Okay. No. So you're you're getting these shipped in. Shipped in, yep. And they're fairly hardy, right? Because yeah. they're growing it. So you they're grown in a, they're they're born in an aquarium, so they're very used to it. Right. Um, they are way more accepting to like all the foods and and um, so they're 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 clowns. They're very hardy. Right. You know. So this is one of the best fish to start off your aquarium with is a clown, especially one that's been raised inside of a system by a breeder, because first off. It hasn't been pulled from the ocean. It has a long trek to the wholesaler, to the dealer, to your tank. This is coming, grown in a system, handed over to the dealer, and then handed over to you. So it's a little bit less of a process, and they're actually used to eating the foods that you're going to feed them. And so that's really cool. You feed them the baby, baby Brian as well? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll um, you know, whatever we don't use, then yeah. we just treat it to all the fish. Right. You know, for our breeding projects. And then we're just like, all right. Some for you, some for you, some for you. Let's go. You were telling me earlier that you have your very own fish food here. Yeah. Tell me about that. What goes into that? I know you had it over here by the front of the store. Yeah, so. Show me this fish food. We're super nerds. We like to do everything. And one of the things that we do like to do is just kind of, I, I guess, like manage whatever goes into the tanks, whatever goes into our fish and everything like that. So we have a manufacturer that makes our own food and we have a bunch of different things for different applications. Some of it's for breeding, like that's really good for fry. Yeah, this is tiny. Yeah. So you got the tiny stuff, you got the All large the way stuff. All pellets. Um, and this is both fresh and salt water. Or yes, no? you, can, you can use that for fresh uh, and salt. We also are coming out with, um, we have like marine flakes and pellets, and um, we're even going to be doing some coral food here soon. So this just is like the, the dry stuff. Las Vegas Aquarium Premium Foods brand. Yeah. Now, people, if they want to buy this, because they watch the video and yeah. they think that you're a cool shop and they believe in what you're doing, where do they buy it from? Right now, you have to come in store. Come in store. Um, soon, we'll. we'll what if I'm in, be what if I'm in Dallas or Florida and I'm watching this video? How am I going to get it? Um, give me a call, send me an email. We'll try to work something out. All right, we'll, all right. we'll ship you a box of it. You It'll gotta cool. get this on your own website so people can start buying it. Obviously, it's working out well on the zoanthids. Yeah. So, good stuff so far, what I've seen here. Let's go look at some of the fresh water. Yeah, yeah, let's oh, go. Before we even look at the fresh water, <laughs> he's standing right in front of Oxalotls. Yeah. What is going on with this madness over Oxalotls? And is it easy? Is it hard? I've got a friend that owns this company called Oxalotl Planet. Okay. He's got hundreds if not thousands of these. What's going on from your perspective with Oxalotls? Um, there's a big push in, in Vegas because right. there's there's several breeders yeah. here and they're just like, I'm popping out babies. Like, oh, can I sell them to you? Yeah, let's go. Which is a big deal because yeah. actually Oxalotls are nearly extinct yeah. from Mexico City. There's, I mean, Max and I actually want to go and visit their actual native source. So yeah. we're working that out now, but you can't get them there anymore. Yeah. And so for the fact Everything that people is came in, they started breeding them, mm -hmm. now you can get them. And they, these guys do things that, we're, we, that we can't do as humans. They, their arm comes off, it regrows back. It's crazy. It's, the, there's massive studies going on with oxalotls. People are buying them, putting them in the aquariums. Are you seeing success with these oxalotls? Long-term interest or short-term interest? I think there's a long-term interest. I right. think it's just about how like you, you start with a good foundation, you start with a good good sized aquarium, you yeah. start with good quality food, I think you'll have really high success. Most of the axolotls that we have are in a big tank. These are for yeah. more just display. And okay. We'll rotate them in and out. Okay, so you do have other tanks yes. with axolotls? Yes. Here? Yeah. All right, let's go take a look at them. We gotta okay. see them. Oh, you keep them right here in the plant tanks? Yes. Oh, they're in these things. Yeah, so, um, and they're, yeah. they're very sneaky. So like, they'll hop out, they'll spend time at the bottom. And then uh, we'll, we'll catch a bunch out, you know, and then uh, we'll sell them to customers. And... Talk about maximization. You said you got <laughs> aquariums from floor to ceiling, but you even inside of your plant takes share these little homes for oxalotls. Yeah. Wow, Jake, he is coming after your oxalotl business. These guys are growing everywhere. How many of these do you sell in a week? Probably a dozen or so. A dozen oxalotls yeah. a week. Yeah. Well, and it was just something where like, 
can you can you guys get us some axolotls? Like just to our customers, we're like, yeah, let's go. Now, if it goes in a fish tank, like we'll, we'll try it. What's the success rate with these guys? Are these guys doing well inside of the home aquarium? Are your customers having a good success with axolotls? I think so because before we made them available to sell, like we got them on the pellets. So we got them on our food. To the, the Las Vegas yes. aquariums. So normally, you know, they're gonna eat worms and live brine. And we, we started off doing that, like with our black worms and stuff right. like that. But we got them onto our pellets and they've been really hardy. So we can actually send them home with food that they can get consistently. And then, um, you know, and plug so in nutrition. So they're already eating. That's the biggest challenge yeah. with so many of the, the stuff that you would get from aquariums is that to get them to eat is, is a bit of a challenge, especially when I started in the hobby. But now, when you come to a shop like this, they've already been feeding them a food that they've been making themselves. So that's actually pretty critical to the success of the animal. So if that's working, I yeah. commend you for doing that because that's a lot of legwork on your part. You're working with the manufacturer to make a custom blend of food that you're feeding the oxalotl to give it a much better chance to live for the end consumer, right? Yeah. Well, but we like it. We like all of us at, at LVA. We just kind of like we're hobbyists. So if we weren't doing this at here, we'd be doing it at home. And then, you know, um, like I breed a lot of fish at home. And then my wife pretty much was like, "You can't have any more tanks." So I was like, "Okay, well I'll get a store." <laughs> How did that come over? First of all, huh? you're still married, right? Yes. Okay, yes. good. <laughs> all right. Jeez. So you got him out of the house. You turned it into a business. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're bringing home some money from that business. <laughs> Maybe not quite yet. I know these things. Yeah. You know, just it's poured into project. it for the first year, but it's like, all right, let's buy more fish. So when I came in here, I thought you'd been doing this for 10, 20 years because this mm -hmm. feels like an old school shop that I used to to walk through and how I got into aquariums. Yeah. So I'm, I'm asking you, expecting you to say, oh yeah, this has been passed down from my dad. I've been, I used to work here as a kid and now I'm running the shop, but you're like, I've been doing this for seven months. Yeah. So this is a seven month old shop, guys. I mean, there's tanks from floor to ceiling. You've got everything that you could buy from tiny little aquariums, larger aquariums, driftwood, oxalotls, freshwater, saltwater, baby angels, discus. You've got everything here. You're doing it for seven months. Yeah. Are you at least doing it full time or are you? No, All right. no. Um, so, so how many hours are you here a week then? And what do you do as a full-time job if this is so, your full-time job? So I'm a, I'm a medic, I work on an ambulance. Wow, okay. Yeah. So I do that, I work like 48 hour shifts. And yeah. I get off the ambulance, I come here and spend the, you know, the next 12 hours or so each day and just try to make it work. So you do pretty much two days, almost no sleep as a yeah. paramedic. <laughs> then you come here for the next five. See the bags under my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna age quickly. Yeah. Oh wow, that's crazy. That's harder than, so a lot of people think I work hard, but two full days, no sleep, then five days running this shop. This is insane. This place has grown enormously in seven months. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see what you're gonna have here in a couple of years. And I commend you for doing what you're doing. This place truly has so much passion in it. Yeah. Thank you for being one of the good guys in the aquarium industry. Guys, if you're anywhere close to the Las Vegas area, you definitely have to come to Las Vegas Aquariums because this guy has passion, this guy cares about what he's doing, he makes his own food, and he's helping you sustain the life of your fish. So thank you again, Clint. Hey, We're gonna you. get out of here. Appreciate it, thanks but for coming by. Thank you, and we're going to the next shop.